hope you'll be back pronto, folks. But right now, here's another yarn for you. One stormy night, the boys are drinking milk with all their might and eating the cereal they like the most. Sugar crisp that's made by folks. But all of a sudden came a terrible din. So in the 19, what was it, 19... 40s or 50s now I'm, I'm forgetting the dates but there was a, an expose recently by a graduate student in California who found some old research and old data that in the 40s 50s Harvard researchers were paid by the sugar industry to make fat look like the culprit for heart disease and that really spawned a huge I don't know decades long um, revulsion of fat by the American public now in the 80s and 90s when the industry really exploded and the, the market really exploded with fat-free products. The thing that replaces fat in a lot of these products is sugar. So while we were decreasing fat, we were increasing our intake of sugar hugely. And in the end, it looks like sugar is certainly the worst. So, so I think, yeah, there's like definitely levels of sugar. Like, I think refined white sugar is probably the worst kind of sugar, if you would agree. And I think like brown sugar is better than that, slightly less processed. And then comes like other forms from different, different other plants. Like there's... Um, like honey. Honey's good, but also like coconut sugar. There's even molasses better than like refined sugar because that's actually, it has... Like sorghum, benefits. I was reading about, well, we don't have sorghum, but like... Sorghum is a flower? Yesterday I got really hungry and I ate one of those like like Justin's peanut butter cups that were dark chocolate and it like really took the edge off um, <laughs> and I feel like maybe that's a level of like a level of dependency. I was addicted to sugar in the way that I think many um, other people are addicted to drugs. Most people eat refined carbohydrates at every meal and in between every meal. We really drive the industry um, that it in itself drives our access. Um, it's cheap, it's everywhere, and it tastes really good. Three things that make it hard to resist. It's actually 53% of the last, um, uh, in the last study of Americans have something called insulin resistance, and this is caused by refined carbohydrates, uh, sugar spikes, and insulin spikes throughout the day. The more this happens, the more often you're on this roller coaster, the, the more your body resists insulin, um, becomes almost numb to the effects of insulin, including the brain. So over time what's happening is insulin has a hard time crossing into the brain. The brain becomes resistant to insulin. And you might think, well, okay, as long as sugar you know, can get into the brain, what's the problem, right? So uh, the problem is, is that you can't process that glucose, the sugar that the brain needs for energy. You can't process that without insulin. So if the insulin can't get through, the brain cells literally start to starve to death, even though they're swimming in a sea of glucose. So insulin resistance, 53% um, of Americans is that's a lot of number, and it's rising. Uh, all of us, most of us, are on this pathway. The, the fact that sugar has been shown to literally cause Alzheimer's disease in many cases has led scientists to start calling Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes. Being a type 1 diabetic, I have like a lot of different feelings about sugar. Um, I definitely know that my blood sugar goes high, I feel very toxic, and cause, because blood sugar is, or sugar is being accumulated in my blood and isn't being processed, so um, it's a very toxic feeling, it feels very disgusting and unclean. I feel guilty about it sometimes when I eat it, so I feel like my problems with sugar aren't necessarily about the health, I just feel gross after I eat it. And it makes me kind of hyper in like an unhealthy way. It sounds so simple to say, well, just eat real foods, which means, you know, meat, poultry, seafood, nuts, fruits, vegetables, eggs, things that have existed forever on the planet. It sounds so easy, but when most of us think about that, it's really different from how we eat. So we know that Smith has like the tea times every like Friday. Yeah, like fuck those cookies. Sorry. It's Once I cut out sugar, I noticed that I could sleep a lot better. I could fall asleep faster, more easily, um, and I slept more deeply. And I also noticed that I didn't have that same pull at me. Like, I don't think that we need to ban sugary things, because like, that kind of bothers me a little bit, like thinking about like, oh, like let's not have desserts. Like, <laughs> no. I think the, the compromise might be 
offering dessert at certain meals or a few times a week or only at one meal per day. So it's not punitive, but rather becomes the easy choice by default. We tend not to think about dessert if it's not right in front of us, but when it's there at the end of the line, there's cookies, we grab one and we haven't even thought about that. Again, one of those mindless decisions. And if it's on, you know, on the table at the end of your lunch, you're more likely to eat it for that reason. Yeah, I think just with the amount of like fun Smith can use for buying food and buying food for different events, we can definitely try. I think it should be um, an intention to put more funds into more savory foods and also more fresh foods. And I think I think that there's a way to like eat sugar and be a well-balanced, healthy human. If faculty and administrators and parents understood how damaging these foods are, these non-foods are, we might be able to change cultures on campuses, If especially if parents and students who are the consumers on campus, if they showed an interest in improving um, the types of foods that are available on campuses, starting maybe with vending machines. Dressing, I, I want never like have. cheese. I know you don't want cheese, but like cheese yeah. and crackers is a much better yeah. like thing to consume. Or it's like fresh vegetables. Or just like fresh veggies. Yeah. My office is in the Shot Center for Health and Wellness. I'm part of the counseling service, and so students can reach me uh, by calling the counseling service at four one three five eight five two eight four zero. If anybody wants an appointment with me, they can always schedule directly with health services. If you'd like additional resources, there are two great movies. One is called Fed Up, and the website is fedupmovie.com. One is called Sugar Coated, and that is available through the Media Education Foundation. There are two great websites as well. One is diagnosisdiet.com, and another is iquitsugar.com.